Welcome back, and before I get on with anything else, I always forget to say, remember, there are a plethora of exciting products available from uh, my website or Etsy shop. There's the lovely Steampunk Kraken Proximity Gauge Kit, so you can build it and decorate it as you see fit, or I can provide them ready built. There are all sorts of decorative gauges. This is the tea gauge to tell you how much tea you've had and how strong it was. Or oh, there's working machines, there's air horns, there's all sorts of stuff. And that is at steamhead.co.uk. So for more information on all the machines and all the bits and pieces that I've invented and made, that's the place to visit. There where I can get it right into the full shot. Alternatively, is my Etsy shop as well, and if you're watching this on YouTube, um, the YouTube channel, and there are links to that on my website. Thank you very much. On with the show, so called. After the success of the mouth parts, I thought I'd focus my attention on the eyes. Now, with this, with Victoria, I want to have eyelids that open and close. It's a step up from um, Florence, but it just looks so good. So the first thing I did was to hollow out an eyelid on the 3D modeler, 3D builder software. Initially I thought, well, you know, you need bearings because there's not a lot of room to get this moving. So I thought, oh, I've got these little bearings, I could mould this or print this in size to fit with those and then it would be nice and smooth. And I thought, well, hang on a minute, don't overcomplicate everything. Find out if you can print something that would actually allow a support for the axle for the eyelids. The eyelid printed perfectly, it's a millimetre thick, and I was really impressed with that. So I tried printing one, and this one is, as you can see, if you can, 7.3 millimeter diameter hole. The shaft on this is seven millimeters, according to the 3D builder, and this works perfectly. Then I thought I would try, because I printed this one upright, and this one, the eyelid, if it makes any sense, is printed flat like that so the plastic's going round and round and round so it's not going to lend itself as you can hear it's quite rough it's not going to lend itself moving very easily within some sort of um, support that is also printed like that but it does surprisingly I did try and print one flat so it was like that but to be honest with you there's really very little difference. They do turn really well. So this PLA plastic is very low friction, that's perfect. So I've built two of these into the existing head and I was going to print them out and just see if they worked after I'd worked out how to move them with um, a, a servo motor. Most servo motors link to what they need to move with a lever a flexible lever. Tried it at the maximum extensions, the fully closed eyelid, the fully open eyelid, and it seems to work. So that's what I'm going to go with with that. I'm just printing the eyelid mechanism to test it. This is a very nice demonstration. Every time I start the camera, it goes, the printhead goes over. It's a very nice demonstration of how the 3D printer can print something that overhangs. What it's doing as you can see I've set this up to a 15 degree trying to focus 15 degree angle and it's printing as you can see from the bottom up obviously and it's coped with that and now I've got this is going to hold the, the uh, servo motor and it's filling in all the surrounding bits the middle if you like with the cross parts 20% set at and that's that flat bit there is going to be where at the top of where the holds the motor in place. So it's quite interesting to see how it completely combines these shapes because they are separate shapes and I drew them in 3D Builder and then you slice it up and it just turns it into one solid shape which is very clever. Excellent. Well this is all very exciting. 
I did print out a little, oh here we are, I did print out the stepper motor holder prior to this just to make sure because again you know I could spend five hours or I screwed it in. Hey, so I know the screw holes work with the self tapping screws that the servo motor comes with. It's just it's so worthwhile testing each individual little bit. So this servo motor should fit in here. Ah, ha, 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 ha. This is what I'm talking about. It slid in perfectly to the last one, but now it's installed on the actual head itself, the inside of the head steps out a bit. So I can't actually get this in. I can't slide it in and down because of the wires. So that's, that's just typical. It just shows you've got to be so careful. I thought, oh yeah, that's fine. Just print this bit, see whether it works. And it did, and it's perfect. And then you print it on the real thing, and there's the little step there. So I'll have to cut a bit away and then change the come on, change the design to have a little bit more of a, a hole or a slanted bit here so that I can get the stepper motor in, or indeed actually as it's only about 3mm I could just extend the the wire space, the space for the wire about 3mm and then that would allow it to go in. While I'm waiting for this to warm up to start printing the eyelids, it would be worth a mention each time you print something, it'll tell you how many grams and meters of the fiber that you need. And um, because it comes on this roll, very nice drum, stops it tangling. It's you, you can't work out how much it weighs, how much you've got left. So after I used up the first roll and weighed it fairly inaccurately, I found that it weighs. 210 grams. I think that's a little bit exaggerated because I'm using a pair of kitchen skulls. So earlier today, when I stopped before I started printing the the uh, the eye sockets and things, I weighed this, found out how much it took, and found there was 120 grams of fibre still on it. So if you get your fibre from Eson, um, they were the company that was recommended by the person who told me about 3D printing and said that. He'd always use that and it's a really good quality version. Then remember that the spool, the empty spool weighs 210 grams and you can work out whether you've got enough because I thought, you know, it took five hours and four minutes. Imagine if you nearly got it finished and then it ran out of fibre. That would just be such a pain. So now you can work out whether you have enough. This is so clever. I printed the eyelids separately from the eyes in the skull, so to speak, because I needed. Oh, bugger. Oh, because I needed these to have the supports in the middle, because they're one millimeter thick domes, in effect. And it's incredible. It hasn't actually had to support anything yet but it's already started building the support structure. Oh, it's just amazing. Absolutely incredible. Here we are. Here's one of the eyelids and there's the supporting structure. And the amazing thing is that you can just snap it out. It leaves a little bit of detritus behind, but I can cut that out with a scalpel or something. So, I will cut that out with a scalpel and then I will get back to you. In fact I'm not going to use a scalpel because it's too tricky. I'm going to use this um, abrasive wheel. It's got little teeth all around it on the pillar drill. So let's see how that goes. That works really well. As we were taught when I was doing my uh, industrial design engineering course, the B 
best way to see if something is finished is by touch because your fingers are so sensitive they can feel any slight imperfections and that just, oh, that just feels perfectly smooth so I'm very happy with that so here's the idea I'm going to fit in here, I did think about using bearings but I went on those experiments and I thought well if we can 3D print it and there's not too much friction that will be okay so I printed them both separately and obviously I don't need to have this little lever on this one I only need one lever on the right hand side because the right hand side is where the servo servo motor is going so currently I've printed them with a 3.2 millimeter printed hole which allowing for the printing means that a little 3 millimeter brass rod fits perfectly and I thought I'd just at this stage at least glue two of them together because I didn't know how far apart they'd be and I thought I'd just like to leave it so I could adjust it and glue it in the right place but it seems like if I put them in there, left and right, they're absolutely fine. So I've trimmed a little bit off the middle bit, some extra little extraneous parts. I'm going to glue them together, glue that brass rod in, and then see how well it moves. Well, I've glued them together. Luckily, I cut a flat on the base of them, so it could give it the 3D printer a little bit more chance but that's great because it means I can push them down push them together once I've got the super glue on and they will stick and also I'm very pleased there's a little ridge at this end like there are when you 3D print things and I've allowed for that by printing a little slot down here now is this dry Let's test it yeah, that's well not dry but set. So that goes in there. Now where's the other bit gone in there? Put that on there and just see. I can feel the friction. So what I might do is just try and sand sand these bits a little bit just to take the edge off this is one of if not my most favorite tool a deburring tool it takes off any sharp edges or well, funnily enough deburs it right so look at that now and then we'll put this bit on and just hold it really tightly. Ooh, I'd say I day. That's fantastic. And the eyes, because I wasn't quite sure modelling on 3D Builder, but the eyes shut and the eyes open and it's completely silent. So here she is, Victoria. Inside I have fixed in the servo motor and I've made a wire linkage, a bit of experimenting to get the right length. The tricky thing is, which I'd forgotten about, is when the eyes are, let's move it by hand, when they're about there, which is open, really overly open, this is horizontal. Now that means if I drive this back that way, if this is just too low, it's actually going to push this the wrong way and then jam up. So what I've done is I have got the length of the lever right. I think it looks nice with the eye open to about there, the eyelid. It doesn't want to disappear all the way. And that means when this reaches the open, maximum open position, this lever is still vertically still angled upwards so you know when this returns it's always going to push it if that makes any sense we turn on and then i've also set it because i noticed when i first switch connect power to this servo it slams itself all the way over to that way to the clockwise or whatever 
and so I've adjusted this so that when that right goes over to there it's not bending, it's not putting any force on this focus on the lever. Servo motors they have three connections here's the three connections and one of them is negative one of them or well, 0 volt which is with these wires black plus 5 volts which is red and the signal and the signal comes from the lovely Arduino which I'm not going to go on and on about but basically some of the Arduino outputs are PWM and that means pulse width modulation it means that they can directly connect to a servo and control it and they're indicated on the outputs by little squiggles so I'm using pin number 9 now we're homeschooling so I can't actually show you the software which may be of great relief to a lot of people the Arduino software that I've written to control this but I've fiddled around with it it's loaded into the Arduino so it should just work so let's, let's undo that switch that on Aha. Right, so it turns around. I've worked at the angles and I've also the code that moves them, it moves it, is written with lots of time delays. It doesn't just go from point A to point B, it goes from point A to point A, one degree, next degree, next degree, next degree, next degree. So it slows down a bit and it looks like that. Fabulous. I'm really pleased with that. Obviously I don't know whether the eyeballs are going to work, there should be room, I mean the fact that this, I allowed a millimetre clearance between the head and the eyelid and then that works perfectly, I'm so pleased. The servo can work much quicker so you could get an almost instantaneous blink but because I want this to last a long time I don't want to put too much force on the little servo motor because you know, it's the inertia, the momentum, the force needed to suddenly start and suddenly stop might be too much for it over a period of time. You can see inside, I get it, there we are, you can see all the gears, the teacher little motor inside, and the long gear train with the gears getting bigger and bigger and coarser and coarser just because they need to take more force. This very common Tower Pro Micro Servo 9 grams. So it can exert a force of 9 grams at a centimetre or so, I don't know, something or other. But they're really nice. Fabulous. Thanks so much for watching. I think I can resist combining this with her mouth parts and we'll see what that looks like. What a strange looking thing. Thanks again for watching. I hope it was interesting and had some useful top tips for people who are making their own inventions. Remember, if this is YouTube, please click subscribe. And if it's Facebook, please click like. Thanks very much. Now on with designing her eyeballs that are going to look left and right and up and down. I do like a challenge. <laughs>